my name is Mike Gerhardt, and I'm a postdoctoral researcher in the Energy Conversion Group at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory in Berkeley, California. So I'm going to start with the end of that and then work my way back towards the beginning. Berkeley Lab, fun fact about Berkeley Lab, it's actually more than one building. You know, when I hear laboratory, I usually think of a, a room somewhere in a basement with some beakers and some lasers and some scientists writing in clipboards. But Berkeley Lab is actually much bigger than that. It's a whole campus with thousands of employees, all devoted to scientific research on energy and the environment. People from all across the country and all over the world come to Berkeley Lab to work here, to collaborate with each other, to collaborate with us on these interesting problems. So it's a really fun place to meet a lot of people and learn a lot of interesting science. Within Berkeley Lab, I work in the energy conversion group. We work on energy conversion technologies. One example of an energy conversion technology would be the engine in a car. So it takes as its input chemical energy in the form of gasoline and converts that into mechanical energy to turn the wheels to push the car forward. As a postdoc or postdoctoral researcher, I work on several specific research projects related to a different kind of energy conversion technology. Specifically, I work on hydrogen fuel cells. Hydrogen fuel cells take as their input also chemical energy in the form of hydrogen gas and convert it into electrical energy by reacting that hydrogen with oxygen. Now you may remember or know from chemistry that water is H2O, hydrogen and oxygen. So this chemical reaction between hydrogen and oxygen produces water while we're making the electricity. What's nice about that is we can now generate electricity with water as the only byproduct, so it's clean electricity. Now, one of the things I wanted to use this video for is to explain how I got interested in science and how I chose or maybe more like stumbled into this career path. I grew up in Chelmsford, Massachusetts, which is a town about 40 minutes northwest of Boston. Uh, and I liked a lot of things. I was interested in reading, I liked writing, I played football, I wrestled, I played lacrosse, I was in the orchestra. I had trouble picking a favorite class. Uh, I was interested in a, a bunch of different things, and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do when I was younger. My junior and senior year, I took chemistry and physics, and these two classes really taught me some interesting things about science. So in chemistry, we learned about how you can combine elements together to make new compounds. I thought that was super interesting. In physics, we learned how you can use your understanding and your knowledge to design and build new things. For example, like a catapult that can shoot marbles across the kitchen floor. It's totally something I did for a homework assignment and not to annoy my mom. I promise it really was a homework assignment. Anyway, so I, I took those two classes and that sort of solidified my interest in science. And so I went off to college and decided I was gonna major in science and be a scientist. One of the roadblocks I hit along the way is that most colleges, including the one that I went to, don't let you only study science. You have to pick a specific flavor of science, right? They want you to pick to study chemistry or physics or biology or mathematics or electrical engineering or mechanical engineering and so on and so on. But I was interested in all of those things. I ended up studying material science which is the study of what gives things the properties that they have. Things like why is, why is glass transparent or why is steel so hard? Why is rubber stretchy? Those are questions that material scientists study the answers to. And I got there because of a professor in that department who was working on research related to energy technology. He was trying to build a battery big enough to store power from wind turbines and solar panels so that you could store electricity when the sun was shining and the wind was blowing, and then release that electricity at night or when the wind was still. And so you could have renewable energy anytime you wanted it. What I liked about his research was it combined chemistry using different elements and different molecules to store and release that energy, and physics in terms of how to design a battery big enough to actually power a whole house or a city block. And so that's one of the things I really like about energy research in general is that it's so interdisciplinary. It 
requires a little bit of knowledge of chemistry, of physics, of engineering, mathematics. You need to know a little bit of all of those things to know how these energy technologies fit together and how they work together to store, generate, convert energy. So that's one of the things that really excites me and inspires me about my work is I get to study all those different fields of science and practice a little bit of each of them every day. Some of the other things I really like about my job are that I get to work with graduate students and undergraduates and advise some of them or help them solve their research problems. Uh, they always surprise me with, they're all super smart, they're all very good at what they do, they all like their research, they're motivated, they're engaged, they're creative in how they tackle problems. Uh, so it's a lot of fun to work in the group that I'm in because the people in it really make it great. One of the other things I really like about my job is I get to write papers about the research that I do. So explain how I'm doing my research and what I'm learning to other scientists so that they can build on it and pu push it in new directions or study new angles. I also like going to conferences and talking about my research, presenting it to other people and listening to their feedback and listening to their questions and thinking about how can I help other people understand this better and how can I use my research to make other people's lives better. I also really like that the research that I'm doing is applied. We're working on technologies that might actually make it into your car someday. I think that's pretty cool. So that's how I got from, you know, a town outside Massachusetts to where I am today. Uh, but that's not all of who I am. You know, I also like to uh, run. I do a lot of distance running. Uh, my dad, actually my whole family came out last year and my dad and I ran the San Francisco Marathon together. Uh, my, the rest of my family did the half. Uh, that, that was a lot of fun. I'm also into biking, um, and I'm also, I like scientific outreach. Like, I like going to classrooms and talking to people about why the research I do is important and interesting. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video. One of the outreach tools I'm trying to learn how to use a little bit better is Twitter. So if you're on Twitter and you want to ask me a question or learn more about the research that I do, feel free to follow me at I'm at Mike underscore, underscore, Mike underscore Gerhardt. So at Mike underscore Gerhardt, G-E-R-H-A-R-D-T. Should probably work on finding a, a catchier and less complicated one so I can say it in one take. But we'll make do. I'll put it in the comments or something. And then at Berkeley Lab for research from the lab. So thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.